car modeler. My name is Rao, and uh, today I'm going to be working on this uh, Javelin rear bumper, and uh, we'll see how this goes. But uh, you can see I have a broken section here, and uh, um, here's the body it came out of. So you can see I've got a small section to repair on it, and it's a pretty hard item to get. Um, I could resin cast one. I actually have a, uh, another one that I could cast if I really wanted to. But I'm going to see if I can save this one. And uh, going through my stash of parts and also uh, reference material, I have another. Uh, this is off of a 70 AMX, but it's virtually the same bumper. And it fits. They actually interchange on these. But they're not really interchangeable because... This actually says AMX right here and the license plate said AMX. But on the Javelin, it's just a backup light and it says Javelin. So, definitely got to salvage this one. But I have this one just for reference. I can see how it's actually made. Even though, you know, I can just reference this other side. But uh, going through, another thing that I kind of makes me laugh is, you look on the insides, they both say Javelin on the inside. But on the front sides, they say AMX, and the other one says Javelin. So, kind, kind of fun, but discovering little things like that. And I also got the lens here, so I can make sure it still fits. Now, I was just going to make a straight piece out of um, styrene. And especially since the rounded corner is still there, so I got to try and not damage that or break that while I'm doing it and just make the top piece but what I did notice is it's thick on the front but when you turn it around and see if the camera will pick it up it actually has a lip it's thin on the inside so going through my styrene I found this stuff uh, number 294 the angle iron angle uh, 1 8 and um, I forgot I actually had this stuff, but here's a section I just cut free. And uh, the reason I have this is, believe it or not, I've used this for rocker moldings. Matter of fact, here's the last one I did here. Um, this is a 67 Mustang AMT kit, and it's got a few resin items. It's got uh, the uh, replica miniatures of Maryland's. A conversion kit which is hood and the ribbed panel and a few other parts um, but this was previously built and the rocker moldings glue right on there and I actually used this and glued it straight on there and you know trimmed it glued it straight on and then the lip that stuck out ridiculously far I sanded it down and made it the thickness I want I actually cheated by putting another piece right up against it and then sanded it down so that it came real flush but still had a little bit of a lip. But that's what I've used this stuff before. But I'm going to attempt to use it on this. And what I'm going to do is I'll cut a piece, shape it, and get it, get it to fit in there. And then I'll um, thin the front down so it's just the thickness I need right there. But the first steps I got to do is uh, square it up so that I can get a nice flat mating surface to this. And then also this side. And try not to break what's there. which is one of those easier said than done things, but that's how some of these go. So that's pretty square, if you can see, see them there. And let's see about getting that to fit. First thing though, Let's square one of these up. Okay. That's pretty. 
pretty good. Now, let's uh, measure it. See if I can. Sometimes easier said than done. Since it's a rough cut anyway, and I gotta square it up. This is when I start singing to myself. Got some music playing in the background, but since I'm filming, I'm not going to do that. So if I sing to myself, I might have to pick something that's friendly, like uh, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> okay. All right, well, we're getting there. So we're, we're getting there. Now I get to trim the front down. I got to trim that quite a bit. So, see what I can find to, to do that. Using my calculated eyeball here. I know that's still a little too thick, but getting it in place. Let's see what we can do about thinning it. Let's use this. Put that on the bottom side. getting it there. As it gets thinner, it gets harder to sand. Hmm. 
I'm just holding it down with all three fingers, one on each side and one in the middle. I'm trying to keep even pressure on it so I thin it down to the right thickness. Still a little thick. But you can see what's going on there. I love how when you see stuff for this for sale, or even in real cars, when somebody says, it's an easy fix or it's an easy resto. Okay, if it's really easy, why haven't you done it? So, I always laugh at those ads. Oh, it's a real easy. Okay. I get that. If it's real easy, why didn't you just do it? Okay. A <clears throat> little bit more. Add a small spike in that, so I'll just flatten that to help it accept it. And that's starting to look pretty good. So, get my special applicator here. I'm super glue. Let's see about, let's do this. Use my masking tape to line it up where I want it to go. Stick it down in place. So you see it kind of holding it, and uh, Carefully calculating and measuring and eyeballing and all of that so I can get it in the right spot. Because once it's glued, it's glued. I could break it free and redo it, but I want it to move a small fraction, but yet. It seems like it wants to go a quarter of an inch, and I want it to move an eighth of an inch. 
numbers might be slightly exaggerated, but again, I am using the calibrated eyeball. Okay. All right. Let's uh, put down the glue. I do this when I do a lot of super gluing is I put the glue on the tape and I don't squirt it right on the part um, most of the time. I won't say I never do because I have. But I'll pick some super glue up and I'll stick it right where I want it to go. Okay. Right, right there. Now let's get a dab on the other side. Right there. And then let's see about getting a small piece on that center spike. Alright, we'll give that a a minute to set up and in that meantime I seem to really like javelins as you can tell like I jokingly refer to what another javelin I'm building another javelin I showed you my finished uh, um, Mark Donahue javelin and then you guys all know um, here's a teaser pick this thing is almost done there's my other 70 javelin Trans Am project so there's that one that's almost done here's the funny car one that you guys just saw me stripping because I want to fix this bumper and get the chrome redone and then I've got a fourth one I've actually got a mint unbuilt kit got a thing for pony cars apparently an addiction as I've got four 70 javelins um, not to brag but four of them, one, one of them is that resin one, so, and then three of these. I've got four of the 69 javelins and two of the 68 javelins. So, anytime one's landed in my lap, I've had a hard time not buying it. But that's me. All right, let's see. Let's see if I can get this off without... All right. There she is, glued in place. Let's see if the taillight lens still fits. All right, that fits. And she's gonna fit in the body. Yep, she fits in the body. All right. So I think that's going to work for me. And just a little more body work, cleaning it up, and then I'll get it uh, chrome plated. And we'll see how she works from there. So I'm pretty, pretty happy with that repair. And what did that take me? 20 minutes? So, I guess you can call that an easy repair. I don't know about that, but pretty happy with that. And then I'll get that uh, um, final on the body work on it. Just clean it up a little bit more. Get her chrome plated. And uh, we'll continue on with this one. So, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for uh, watching. And we will uh, continue on with it. You guys have a wonderful day.